Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time, a show that speaks to global leaders, to people witness to the making of contemporary history. Today I'm in conversation with Ukraine's ambassador to India, Alexander Shevchenko. Ambassador, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me with you. Ambassador, I'd like to start by asking you about both our countries, about India and Ukraine, and how in the last uh, few years, you've been in India, I believe, since 2010, is that correct? Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. So in these last four years, we've seen history change in a sense, both in Ukraine and in India. Ukraine, you've just had elections um, a few days ago, or last week, you've, you have a new president. In India, we've had new elections, we have a new prime minister, a whole new government. Now. Before I come to Ukraine itself, I believe you have, um, you have met Narendra Modi, then Chief Minister of, of Gujarat. Is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely correct. Okay. And uh, you, are, you are right. Uh, this uh, September mm -hmm. will be four years uh, since I have arrived to India as ambassador. All right. And uh, actually, it was very, very interesting that uh, upon my arrival, I received invitation from Gujarati government to attend one of the important events. It was Navratri festival. This is, it, uh, this is uh, four years ago in 2010? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and it was, uh, it was invitation from uh, Gujarati government mm -hmm. and uh, the then chief minister uh, Narendra Modi. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I participated in all events organized by uh, Gujarati government. So you've been to uh, Gujarat? Several times? Oh, yes, yeah, several times. I also participated in, uh, uh, in investment uh, summit. The Vibrant uh, Gujarat. The Vibrant Gujarat, yes. It, it was very fascinating to, to watch uh, how, how Gujarat was developing, mm -hmm. how much international attention is focused on, uh, on this particular state. But why was Ukraine interested <clears throat> in Gujarat? Well, I, I was interested in Gujarat because it was uh, it was my first uh, visit to one of the region in in, in India, India, which was really vibrant and uh, developing uh, okay. very rapidly and with with uh, good results in economy, in, in in social policy, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And of course, the uh, the statute of, of uh, uh, Chief Minister, then Chief Minister uh, Narendra Modi, was was really very very attractive, you know, and but does uh, the Ukraine promises which he, he he actually okay. uh, uh, promised, uh, I mean, to deliver uh, uh, this. This is the agenda which he came to to Indian public during but, these elections. But does Ukraine have any investment in Gujarat? Of course not. Of no, course okay. not. But, but, but you we, still went every year. Uh, yes, yes. It was very interesting to communicate with uh, with international business people to 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 understand what what they are looking. So it was a good opportunity uh, for you to meet other people across the world who had gathered. Yes, to and, and to learn more about the regions uh, in India. Okay. Yes. And and was there any other state that you went to uh, in the last four years? Oh, I'm yes. sure you went to several. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But which, sure. any other state that you went to as often as Gujarat? Oh, that was Andhra Pradesh. That was Madhya Pradesh, uh, Karnataka. Okay. Uh, yes, a lot of. So you've uh, been West to Bengal. all these states three or four times, like mm, you've been to Gujarat. Yeah, not not exactly two, three, four times, but but uh, okay, uh, so sometimes yes. So you met times. Narendra Modi, then Chief Minister of Gujarat. Yes, we had opportunity as a group of ambassadors to communicate with Chief Minister. You know, it was very interesting exchange of views and. At the time, we, we understood uh, what his vision was mm -hmm. about, not only uh, about Gujarat, but about uh, India. Okay. So, and that that was very interesting uh, to see how he was delivering this, uh, this his major uh, message to India, Indian people during mm -hmm. his campaigning as, as as a future prime minister of India. But now so, that he is prime minister of India, yeah. it's interesting that he has spoken to several leaders in South Asia. He's spoken to several le leaders in East Asia. He's spoken to the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, he's spoken to the American president. Has there been any opportunity for him to speak to your new president? Uh, not yet, but uh, we believe that after the state visit uh, of uh, ex-president uh, of Ukraine to, to India in 2012, mm -hmm. we, uh, we believe that political dialogue will uh, go on between India and, and Ukraine uh, because we have very, very good uh, uh, results of bilateral cooperation in, in, in many, many spheres. Okay. And, and uh, so we are looking forward that this dialogue will, will go on. Okay, that's great. So let me ask you, um, Ambassador, in these last few four years that we talk about uh, how history has changed, and actually you've been a witness to the to the making of history in your own country. Uh, you've the, the territory of Crimea has been lost to the Russian Federation. What are, what are your remarks on that? Well. Uh to begin with the, the dramatic and political situation in Ukraine, we should, uh, we should uh, remember that uh, the people's unrest started in Ukraine after the failure 
uh, failure of the ex-president of Ukraine to sign uh, association agreement with which, EU. Which one are you talking about? You've had several ex-presidents. Oh, well, uh, the, 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 the recent ex-president who, who fled to, to Russia. And, okay. And, uh, you have a name? You have a name for yes, him? Yes, Mr. Yanukovych. Uh, is Mr. Yanukovych. Okay, I'm glad you have found, a name. You who have found a name refuge in, in, in the neighboring country. You okay. know? And actually, uh, after his failure to, to, to deliver his promises to the nation, you know, the, the people's unrest began. And people came uh, to, to the maiden, uh, major streets and uh, major squares in different cities, in many cities of Ukraine, you know. Uh, and and uh, that was, it was a very strong protest against the corruption of the, the, that government. So how are relations yeah. now in the wake of uh, the Crimean, how would you describe, the, would you describe it as a Crimean annexation by the Rus Russian Federation? Yes, definitely. You would. This is an annexation. Because this the Russians occupation. say that it's a return of Crimea no, back no, to the motherland. No, no, no. Uh, this is annexation. Annexation after the, the intervention, uh, intervention by Russian troops mm -hmm. in disguise. Okay. Well, and, and then this prefabricated referendum, mm -hmm. who has no legitimacy, and this was, uh, this was clearly stated at the, by the United Nations uh, General Assembly. And you're, very and, resolution. and you're very angry about this. Well, um, this is, this is uh, the mixture of feeling, feelings, you know. This is, of course, we, we are angry. We are very much surprised of such a, such a policy of our neighboring state who, who claim that we are brother nations, you know, and so on and so, so forth. You don't think you're brother nations? Uh, well, we, we don't like this. Uh, propaganda cliche, you know. So if if you if they believe that we are brother nations, so they should should behave like that, you know. They should behave like brothers. Sure. How do you <laughs> how do you think of yourselves with Russia? What is how would you describe your relationship? Well, we with are, we are uh, sovereign, independent states. No, that's fine. But how would you describe your relationship with Russia, which is this powerful neighbor to the east of Ukraine? Yes, yes. Uh, of course, this is a powerful neighbor. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we we have powerful uh, neighbor on the east, and we have powerful powerful neighbor uh, as the European Union on the West, okay. you know. And of course, uh, of course, the, the strategic uh, foreign policy of Ukraine for last decades have been joining EU, you know, it was Okay, it so was how, would you, how would you describe your relationship with the EU, which is a powerful neighbor to the West? Well, we are developing, I should say is, is that, that... Is that a brotherly, brotherly relationship with the EU? Well, you know, uh, EU is, is uh, comprised of, of uh, many countries. I know, many, I know, I know. It's, nations, a, it's, a, it's a comprised of <laughs> we 20, never, we never used we, we never used such, such languages, you know, with okay, regard but, to the European Union. Okay, since, but how since, would you describe <laughs> your relationship with Russia is my question. Well, I would say that uh, both uh, relations with EU and uh, with the Russian Federation, we, we are building uh, it on, on pragmatic base. Okay. No, Ambassador, I'm going to take a very quick break, but we'll be back very please. soon. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time, and I'm in conversation with Alexander Shevchenko, U Ukraine's ambassador to India. Ambassador Shevchenko, before the break, you were a little unhappy about my questioning to you of whether Ukraine and Russia are brotherly nations. Are you, are you unhappy about that? Well, uh, well, of course, I would say that I'm not happy about that. What's going on Why on the, not? On the, on the south and on the east of Ukraine? Okay. Because uh, Russia uh, unleashed aggression uh, against Ukraine, mm -hmm. occupied its territory, okay. uh, and, and now is, is conducting uh, the terrorist uh, operation on the east. So why is, it, why, is it that, why is it that the European Union, which is on the west of Ukraine, it has come out in support of you, of course, there has been a resolution in the United Nations where India abstained. But we will talk about that a little bit later. But why is it that the EU and the Americans, who are an ocean away, are, are really refusing to come out in support of you? They haven't done, they haven't, they've, they've said, you know, they've said all, uh, they've been critical of the, of the Russians, but they, actually they haven't done very much. You know, I cannot agree with that. Okay. Yes, because because actually the the major support we we received uh, from EU, United States, Canada, and other states, you know, mm -hmm. including Australia, uh, Japan. But no action on the ground. A lot of well, a lot of verbal what, what criticism. Do mean, what do you mean actions on the ground? You oh. know, uh, I mean military action. It it was you know not not no on the sanctions. Agenda. Hardly any no, no, hardly but, any but, sanctions. No, but but sanctions are there. Sanctions on the place. Very yeah. little. The Germans have said enough. We don't want to sanction Russia anymore. 
okay, uh, we understand that the position of different countries within EU is, is uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is, this is a democratic union, uh, okay. well, to say. And, uh, of course, each country, each country has its each level of uh, relations but in comparison upset, with but Russia. But you're upset about that. You're upset uh, that the EU... No, we, we are taking, we are taking it as, as a reality, you know. If there are some, some interests of some other countries, so we, we respect it, we understand it. But, uh, but I cannot agree that, that there are no sanctions. Okay. Uh, but there are two packages, packages, you, two packages of sanctions mm -hmm. now where they are working. Uh -huh. And actually some actions of, of uh, the uh, authorities in Kremlin, they demonstrate that they, they are taking into account the, the, the position of, of EU. Uh, they are readiness to, to launch the third package of sanctions. But you're no. upset that the EU isn't taking much more action on the ground. Are you as upset about no, that? No, no, we are, we are very happy with, with support of EU. Actually, okay. actually we uh, signed a political part of association agreement. Mm -hmm. Now with the new president in, in office, uh, we will be working very actively with EU to sign the second part I mean, the you, economic uh, cooperation and free trade zone with okay. EU. But do you want to, does Ukraine want to become a member of the European Union? Yeah, sure. As I said, we, we, uh, the journey in EU has always been among the strategic priorities of the foreign policy of Ukraine. Well, uh, the two issues joining EU and, and uh, NATO, okay. you know, in, in, the, in, in our history. Uh -huh. The joining EU has a uh, majority, majority uh, of, of supporters within Ukraine. All right. Uh, and, of course... Not uh, necessarily EU, in Eastern no, Ukraine. No, 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 no. This is, this is all. So figures, figures, well, they, they, they are different for, from region to region, but majority, up to 70, 80 percent of population of Ukraine is supporting idea of joining EU. But, Ambassador, you would, know, you would know, Ambassador, on the ground, that the European Union, which is now broke, more or less, and has a lot of countries that are not doing very well on its hands. You've got Greece, you've got Portugal, you've got Spain, which is sort of on the brink, if not on the brink already. And the EU is having a tough time dealing with all these countries that have already been a part of this union for several years. And now there's Ukraine. Well, European Union has its uh, long history, you know, and, and in the mid of, uh, of last century, when the, the process of unification has just started, you know. Mm -hmm. Since that time, there were ups and downs, you know. And it's, it would be very wrong to speculate on, on the current crisis uh, within EU, you know, which, which is a result of, of course, uh, economic, the global economic situation. I believe that uh, European Union has, uh, has great potential to cope with these difficulties which they are facing now. But all but I'm saying, Ambassador, is that it's, if today, if you look at it, or in the next six months or the next one year or two years, you know, and I know, that it's going to be very difficult for the European Union to take another country on board, especially one like Ukraine. Okay. Uh, well, association agreement with EU doesn't provide that Ukraine will join EU immediately okay. with immediate effect. All right. Uh, all the countries uh, from uh, uh, Eastern, former, uh, I mean, uh, Soviet bloc, you know, mm -hmm. like Poland, uh, Czech, Slovaks, Bulgaria, yeah. it took it took from seven to nine years. So how many years uh, so are you looking at before well, you it, could? It depends. No, it what depends. is your what is your time? It depends time, upon time frame. Well, we we should work very hard. We should work very hard. But how long will that take? In your own lifetime as a career diplomat, as a political appointee, whatever you are in the next 10 years, 15 years, how long do you think it could take? Well, it could, could take 10 or 15 years, uh, and, and, but, but the, the, the major point is that uh, this idea is, is supported widely in Ukraine. And you're willing to wait? We are willing to work. And with we are the Europeans. willing to with Europeans okay. yes, to bring our system, to bring our economy, to bring our uh, standards of life in Ukraine in line with standards in European Union. Because you feel that you're much closer to the Europeans Absolutely. than, Absolutely. than the Russians. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, so, uh, before I take a break, I want to ask you, the whole idea of old Rus began in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. After all, the whole Orthodox Christianity, the whole Russian Orthodox Church, actually has its roots in Ukraine. You're right. Right. So what happens when you become more European? What should happen? 
Now, I'm okay. asking you. Well, uh, well, uh, let's let's say that that uh, Bulgaria, for example, is also have uh, Eastern Christianity, you know, and and uh, uh, some uh, republics of former former Yugoslavia, which are, which are also looking uh, towards the European Union. They they, mm -hmm. they have also East Christian community, but but uh, well, within the democratic societies, each each religion uh, have have the right. So you to think develop. Russia has to learn to live? with a more Europeanized Ukraine. They yeah, have to do I, I believe that this is also in, in the interest of Russia. Okay. That, European be, uh, that Ukraine be a part of European Union, that, that the, you know, the standards of rule of law, you know, the freedom of speech, freedom of press, you know, and then... Uh, you don't think this exists in Russia? I think that they have problem with that. With freedom of speech <laughs> and rule of law? Well, as we see it. Okay. I would say, you know, the, with events uh, in Ukraine mm -hmm. and how they have been covered by Russian media, right. Russian state uh, TV and radio broadcasting company. You know, that, that is, was very, very difficult to, to tell that uh, it was objective, you know, and, and truthful presentation of uh, events in, and in Ukraine. And, you know, they, they, there were also mass protests in, in Russia, in, in Moscow in particular, uh -huh. in support of Ukraine. Okay. And they didn't receive... Uh, proper coverage on, on, on the uh, television and, and radio. Okay, Ambassador, we'll, I'm going to take a very quick break again yeah, and please. we'll continue our conversation of this. Don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time and I'm in conversation with Alexander Shevchenko, Ukraine's ambassador to India. Ambassador Shevchenko, I know you're very upset with the Russians for annexing Crimea, as you say, and... Uh, and of course, the, the way the Russians describe it, it's a return of the Crimean pen Peninsula to the, to the Russian motherland. But let me ask you, there was a resolution at the United Nations on the cr Crimean crisis, on the Crimean situation, and India abstained in that resolution. Were you upset with that? Well, uh, we understand the, the position of India in terms that uh, India has uh, very good relations uh, historically, traditionally, with, uh, with the Russian Federation and during Soviet, since Soviet times. Um, but uh, we, um, we find this it very encouraging that uh, 100 countries all over the world, mm -hmm. they supported the resolution which says that there is no validity in this referendum and annexation of Crimea to Russian Federation. But so India we believe was one of those still, that, okay. Still, we still believe and we still uh, think that this is Ukrainian territory, mm -hmm. temporarily occupied by the Russian Oh, Federation. you still believe it's uh, sure. uh, Ukrainian territory? Yes, sure. Okay. But India was one of uh, several countries that abstained. China abstained too. China abstained. Uh, a, number, a number of countries uh, abstained, uh, yes, and uh, there, are the, there were 11 countries which uh, voted against the, revolution, uh, the resolution and actually supporting, uh, supporting uh, Russian, Russian occupation so by you Crimea. Say, so you yeah. say that uh, it was an encouraging sign for Ukraine, the fact that India abstained? I said that uh, it was encouraging that 100 countries supported the position of, okay, of but Ukraine. What was your reaction to India's abstention at the UN? Well, uh, actually, there was uh, there was no such uh, official reaction to right. that, as okay. we, we we understand that uh, every I mean the position of each country uh, within United Nations and the, the General Assembly has its uh, its own grounds. Uh, but what is your what is your what is your reaction? What did you think of India's abstention? Well, uh, I would say in general, uh, I would like uh, uh, the, the message which uh, I have delivered to, to the authorities here. And, uh, and still I would like to, to um, repeat it uh, here in this studio that uh, we, uh, we believed that uh, India should be more outspoken in terms of support of Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty. You think India was not outspoken enough? Well, I, I would say that there was no uh, clear message uh, to this end, uh, you know. And uh, we believe that India, as a, as a country who has been recently a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and who is uh, uh, looking for a permanent membership in, uh -huh. this, uh, in this body, uh, should, be, should be in line of, uh, of the core principles of the United so what, what uh, Nations India Charter. Have, what do you think India should have done? Pardon? What do you think India should have done? 
No, as I said, as I said, we, we believe that, uh, and we believe that India will further support the territorial integrity and sovereignty of, of Ukraine, uh, and in particular, in particular, with the issues of uh, with the issue of Crimea. Okay, yeah. but you're saying that India should have been much more outspoken. You believe that, and you say you've del delivered this message to the Ministry of External Affairs, and you're reiterating this message here, right? I, I believe that India should be more more specific in terms of. Uh, what does that mean? I mean that that uh, the the statements uh, of uh, Indian officials um, should be in terms of uh, support of territorial integrity and sovereignty of of my country. I, are you saying an Indian connection? I, I get a feeling that you're signaling to me that there is an Indian connection somewhere. Is that correct? Mm, no, I understand that. Uh, well, uh, as I, as I said, as I put it, that uh, India has a very uh, historically historically very very good uh, and then friendly relations with uh, with the Russian Federation. So maybe that was the reason. Actually, India has uh, the strategic privilege partnership with with the Russian Federation right so that that was maybe the, the reason but you know the 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 issue of territorial integrity you know is is, is, is a very important issue and and we believe that is very important uh, uh, still remains for for many countries around the world no it is no. A, of course territorial integrity is a fundamental issue that's right. very important to right. all countries but why do you think India should come out much more openly? and be more outspoken on this issue of territorial integrity? Because this is among one of the, as you said, uh, core and fundamental principles yeah. of the United uh, Nations okay. Charter. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I understand that uh, many countries uh, around the world have are facing some problems uh, with, with, uh, with uh, possible territorial claims from and you think in India is also facing those? Uh, well, I don't know uh, whether 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 it, it could happen, but I understand that that some some regions uh, on the east, you know, as well as on the north northwest, uh, they are disputable. Well, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, other countries' uh, claims, you no, know, can, can but, you but 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 India believes that let's say that territories of, of which have been disputed, they, they are their territory. They, this is Indian territory, you know. So so I think what are you referring to, Ambassador? Well, I, I, I think that there are some, some uh, regions in Arunachal Pradesh, you know, and, and of course, uh, uh, situation in and around Jammu and Kashmir. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, uh, this, is, this is the issues which should be taken very, very carefully and seriously. Yes, of course. And uh, this, is, this is one, one of the important uh, points. So you're saying that because India has disputes, uh, around Jammu and Kashmir and around Arunachal Pradesh, uh, in Arunachal with China and in Jammu and Kashmir with Pakistan, you're saying that that there could be a link with that and with the with Crimea vis-a-vis uh, -vis Ukraine. Is that correct? Uh I don't don't uh, think that there is a uh, direct connection I okay. mean, with that, but uh, still there are concerns about about that. Where are the you concerns know, in your mind or in India? Well, uh, at least as, as I understand the situation, you know, okay. I, when when I uh, uh, referred to, to to the Minister of External Affairs and then delivered them the, the, the my message message of my government mm -hmm. that well the territory of uh, integrity uh, integ integrity of Ukraine has been violated, you know, and we would like to to see to see more clear cut position of, of the Indian government. So that was uh, a point uh, where which which we believe should be should be addressed in a proper way. And what was the response that you got? Mm. Well, we, we received uh, a, a number of statements have been issued by mm -hmm. the Ministry of External Affairs. Okay. Some official also has been spoken with regard. It was also some statements with regard of uh, legitimate Russian interests uh, mm -hmm. in Ukraine That's and right. so on and so forth. So, so what do you, what do you make of that? Bit, the form a bit confusing. So the know? former uh, National Security Advisor in the former Congress-led UPA government, Mr. Shivshankar Menon, did say that Russia had legitimate interests in Crimea. Would you agree with that? Yeah, uh, that, that's actually uh, 
course, a very, very big surprise, you know, because we don't understand what, what kind of legitimate Russian interests are there. Mm -hmm. If Russians are fighting to protect Russian ethnic minority, so there is very clear that uh, their rights uh, have not been violated. There have been no attacks on Russian on the and basic uh, grounds that they are just uh, Russian uh, ethnic minority. And what about the tension in eastern Ukraine? You think that that could flare up and that that part of Ukraine could also secede from Ukraine and join join Russia? No, we don't think so, because uh, federalization of Ukraine, you know, and separatism, this is, this is not natural for, for Ukrainian nations, okay. uh, which, which uh, comprised of Ukrainians and then Russians and, and other uh, nationalities and ethnic minorities. So it has been brought artificially from, from abroad. Okay. Actually, current uh, anti-terrorist operation, uh, which is conducted by the government and which had been supported by the president uh, of Ukraine, newly elected, you know, it, it brings some, some good results and hopes that it will, it will be and very soon. Okay. No. Ambassador, we are completely out of time, but I do want to ask you one very quick question about Indian students in Ukraine. There no. are about 6,000 Indian students. Are they safe? Um, is they, I, should there be any concern, any worry about them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, according to our statistics, we have we have four thousand four thousand four thousand okay. Indian students. Okay, I stand uh, at corrected. It was it uh, in the statement of Ministry mm -hmm. of External Affairs. Five thousand Indian Indian citizens there. With regard to Indian students here, uh, most of them are uh, studying in universities in east and and, and south of of Ukraine. Right. Uh, actually, we have been uh, issued uh, recommendations. Uh, and of course, uh, to Indian students and uh, uh, respond to, to the concerns of Indian families, you know, whose students are there. Uh, well, recommendations were, uh, well, to abstain visiting the, 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 the centers of disturbances, you know. Okay. And actually, actually, uh, it, it concerns only Donetsk and, and Lugansk. Right. So the, the major east region is, is more or less calm. Okay. Yeah, but uh, in, we, we, we are also concerned about their safety. You know? And then uh, this year, their summer exams have been you know, moved okay. uh, I mean, uh, closer and, and right. they had a chance to, to leave to India uh, earlier than, okay. than usual. So I'm going to recommend them on air that they write to you if there's any problem. Oh, sure, yes, yeah? please. <laughs> please. I, we are working and uh, okay. we understand that Indian embassy in, in Kyiv in Ukraine is yes. also yes, working in that yeah. regard. We, we are in contact with uh, rectors and chancellors of universities. Right. They are ensuring us that everything is okay, okay. they are safe. And then Ambassador Shevchenko, thank you so much for speaking to Rajya Sabati. Thank you for having me with you today. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. You've been watching Indian Standard Time in conversation with Alexander Shevchenko, Ukraine's ambassador to India. Next week, we will have yet another exciting global leader or thinker. Till then, goodbye and good luck.